Hallelujah. Indeed, this is a critical moment. It's a critical moment in our lives and destinies. The whole earth has been subjected to a factory reset because there is an agenda that will come next. Turn your Bible. Let us clear up the air. Let's clear up the air. There are a few scriptures in the Bible that people quote as authorities that have been set forth by our first fathers uh, that seem to suppress suppress the possibilities of women in terms of ministry engagement. I want to us to look at it quickly so that we will not misinterpret the spirit of our ancestors. First Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2 beginning from verse 9. I will therefore no, in like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety not with Breaded hair, nor gold, nor pearls, nor costly array, but would become at women professing godliness with good works. If you followed my little charge yesterday, you'll be able to put these issues in context. He said, Let women learn in silence and with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence for Adam was first formed then eve and adam was not deceived but the woman being deceived was in transgression notwithstanding she shall be saved in child bearing if the continuing faith and charity and holiness with sobriety hallelujah i say hallelujah we were able to establish yesterday how that a woman's message is most adequately revealed through her character. The definition of a woman, the substance of a woman is character-based. And just in case a woman is married to an unbeliever, what will make the unbeliever to find conviction enough to consider the way of the Lord will be in the woman's conduct, chaste conduct. And such a woman, the Bible says, is she that has an ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit and the very substance of her beauty transcends her face and her physique and it reaches into the fineness of a heart that is under the government of Christ himself and we see in this scripture and this scripture is establishing the same perspective that the true beauty of a woman is not in the hair she braids is not in the um, what do they call this? The jewelry she puts on. The best of her possibilities lies with the spirit of Christ that has built in her heart. We also say how that younger women have their beauties on their faces. And as you grow older, it's supposed to transfer to your heart. That ornament of the heart, the beauty that comes from the heart, does not fade. And the Bible says in the sight of God is of a great price. That ornament is not just, is not just um, relevant in the eyes of mortal men that look upon the chaste reflection of Christ that is captured within our conduct. But even from heaven, God sees the ornament and in his own sight is of a great price. So we, we touch that in terms of physical dressing vis-a-vis -vis character, conduct, and the state of the heart. Hallelujah. So the emphasis is not that women should not wear jewelries, because if, if it is so, then they should not wear apparel. They should not wear clothes too. So that's not, that's not the emphasis in that outline, is uh, uh, the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, the inner beauty superior to the external beauty. And at all times, we must know that the Apostle Paul actually sues for balance even in the natural outlook there is balance that uh, must be struck in order for us not to be confused uh, or misrepresent the lord that we serve the, the critical issue of the scripture for which i read it are two matters and this is a scripture that is normally referred to uh, in establishing a case against women that they are not supposed to teach. They are not supposed to teach. Um, what exactly is this scripture saying? There are two reasons for which these, these 
women not teaching. There are two reasons for which that is normally emphasized. But I'd like us to look at the scripture more critically in the next five minutes. Number one, the first reason is Adam was first formed before Eve. Adam was first formed before Eve. Are you with me? This is the illustration. Now, this is the illustration that is given in keeping with I will not permit a woman to teach or to usurp authority over the man. Are you with me? Then the illustration that was given was the illustration of Adam and Eve. The illustration that was given was not a congregational illustration, but it was a family illustration. Are you still with me? The illustration that was given, I want, to, I want you to enter your head first. The illustration that was given is not family, is not congregational based. It is family based. That's number one. Are you with me? Secondly, I'd like us to understand that the Bible says it is the man that came before the woman. That's one. Number two, it is Eve that was deceived and not Adam. So because Eve was deceived, her error was transgression. And because Adam was not deceived, his error was rebellion. Are you with me? However, the Bible says that if a woman is subject to the processes that God has ordained for her, namely physical childbearing, namely, and spiritual fruit, if she continues in faith, in charity, and in holiness, she'll be purged of the, her propensity to be deceived. Are you with me? She'll be what? Purged of her propensity to be deceived. Meanwhile, the context that was used to illustrate the presentation was not congregational. The context was family. Adam and what? Eve. It must be understood that God has bequeathed the authority for headship to the man. And that's what puts the woman in a weak place. That's what makes her a weaker vessel because she cannot decide to come up with an idea and execute if she is willing to subscribe to the divine order. So imagine yourself in a position where you are not sure your idea will pass the screening. It is a weak place to be, and it becomes even more weak if you are not a woman of prayer. You will not be able to contain the fact that you are not in charge if your flesh is bogus. It's a place that a woman can only survive if she is given to prayer. And we established yesterday that a weaker vessel doesn't mean weak in strength, because my wife happens to have the capacity to endure pain much more than myself. And I discovered that when we went to the dentist. They removed her teeth. She didn't cry out. But when I came for my teeth to be removed, the first thing I did was I laid hands on all the doctors in the, and prayed for them first before <laughs> may the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Is that clear? If God didn't want women to teach, God would not call Joyce Mayer and make her a teacher. I would like you to discern the grace that is upon that woman. It's the grace of a teacher. And she herself has said, the reason why we don't do stuff that other people do is because I am called into the office of a teacher. What this scripture is trying to put in place is uh, that ministry she's running, she'll have to run it under an authority. A woman cannot be a pioneer. Everything you are doing, you must do under an authority. That's how she was designed according to the divine order. Exactly. But this teaching and usurping authority has a context. And the context is Adam and what? Eve. I just felt troubled to set the record straight so that just in case a woman has senses the teaching anointing on her life and she begins to see her expression as a contradiction from her perceived um, um, perceived vista of the position of the scripture you'll be liberated finally Romans chapter 16 verse 7 Romans chapter 16 verse 7 it says salute Andronicus and Jumia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners who are worthy of note among the apostles 
who also were in Christ before me. Paul was able to identify a sister. Her name is Jumia. And this Jumia had an apostolic calling. And not just a trivial apostolic calling. It was Paul himself that said that Jumia's calling as an apostle was notable. That is to say that she had the same kind of capacity that men like Paul had. But she was yet a sister. If God doesn't want women to be apostles, he will not have ordained, given Jumia the anointing of the apostle. If this one is too far into the past, how many of you still remember Catherine Kuhlman? That's an apostle. She, she, she brought the entire body of Christ, including you and me, into an economy in God. Hallelujah that was lost before that time. She brought the entire, an entire generation into something that was not obtainable before she showed up. That was an apostolic grace that's upon that woman. And if you are confused about anything, you cannot be confused about the hand of God that was upon Catherine Kuhlman. The thing about a woman is that she must operate from a covered position. She cannot be a pioneer because even if God has given her a mandate she will need a covering. And most of the time, the person that is covering her will take the glory for the initiative. Alright? So she's not a glory person. She's a cornerstone that is hidden away, which is the reason for the strength that the entire building sustains. Once again, we say with boldness, that the time for revival has come and God's emphasis is on the continent of Africa. And among the functionaries that God will be deploying to achieve his intent at this time are the lionesses. It is true, they are raw, that the serpent will be destroyed.